Hi, welcome to Hack of All Trades. My name's John. Thanks very much for joining me. In today's video, we're going to be taking another look at the end table that I'm building for my mother-in-law. It's just a small uh, end table made out of a red gum slab offcut that I had lying in the shed. And uh, I cut it in half. And in the previous video, we poured the epoxy to make a river table. If you take a look down in the description below, you'll find a link to that previous video. At the end of that video, I was a bit disappointed with the way that the table had come up. Uh, it was my first attempt at pouring epoxy. And, uh, and I wasn't that happy with the results, but that all changes today. In today's video, we're just going to do a high-speed video montage, and I'll just be providing some random commentary along the way. You'll see the result at the end, and I'm much happier now with the, the way that it's come up. So sit back, and I hope you enjoy this video. So here's where we finished the last video, just with the table in the mould. I'm just pulling the mould apart now. The mould was just held together with 41mm um, brads and I'd used plain old silicone to seal up the edges so that the epoxy wouldn't leak out. And I'd lined the mould with uh, just plain old clear packing tape. Uh, that actually works really well. The, the epoxy just refuses to stick to that so it makes pulling the mould apart really easily. The only thing that sticks, as you'll see, is the silicon um, that I put around the edges. So you can see me just putting some wedges in here now, and that's purely to separate the, um, the table from the um, silicon. Uh, the packing tape ensures that the, um, that the epoxy just won't stick to the actual timber itself. came off nice and easy. So here we are outside. I'm just putting the table top uh, down into the router sled. Well, this is the base of the router sled. And now you can see I've got the router sled set up. The router sled is just made out of a couple of lengths of aluminium angle, uh, and that keeps it all nice and rigid and straight. I'm just using a 50mm planer bit in the router and, uh, and that made short work of this, uh, it, it flattens it out in, in no time. Um, it does leave uh, little lines in the timber that are about, I guess about a quarter of a millimetre deep and they came out, coming out pretty easy uh, with sanding. So I plane down both sides just to make it nice and even and flat. I think every single bit of dust that came off that router landed on the lens of the camera. Uh, I don't know how I managed that, but there you go. So now that it's out of the router sled, uh, I'm just going over sanding it down. Uh, again, the, the router leaves um, small lines in the, uh, in the timber that are about a quarter of a millimetre deep. Uh, and so I just go over them with some fairly coarse sandpaper. I can't remember whether I was using 40 grit or 60 grit at this point, uh, but uh, it didn't take too long to get rid of them. You can see in the foreground in the epoxy there that there were a couple of spots where the epoxy didn't level because I was uh, I kept stirring it right up until the point that it became uh, almost set. Uh, so I went back and filled those in with clear epoxy later on. And now I'm just going over with some finer sandpaper. I think this is about 80 grit that I'm using at this point, now that all of the lines from the, the router are out of it. A lot of people don't really like sanding, but to be honest, I, I really enjoy it. I, I find it quite therapeutic, and, uh, and I quite enjoy just blanking out and, and getting stuck into it. So I did go over the, the back of the table. I, of course I didn't spend as much time as I did on the front, but uh, might as well make it all look nice if I can. So 
So now I've just set up the Triton workbench uh, as a table saw and I kept running it through taking off about a half a millimetre at a time uh, just so that I could, uh, I, I didn't want to take off more timber than I needed to, I really wanted to preserve as much as I possibly could so I just took my time and, and did it about half a millimetre at a time. The Triton workbench is a, a pretty good tool, um, as you can see I don't have a workshop or anything like that so I work work out in my backyard when weather permits. So the Triton I'm just setting it up now in cross cut mode. Uh, I'd previously cut two parallel edges uh, with it in table saw mode but now if I set it up in cross cut mode I'm guaranteed that the edges will uh, all be nice and square. Um, so I'm just using a fence with an end stop on it there. And again, I'm just taking half a millimetre off at a time here, um, just to, so that I can take off as little material as I can. Uh, I didn't really even want to end up in eating up into too much real estate there. So now I'm just doing some uh, finer sanding. I'm just going around it. I, I think I'm probably using 120 grit at this point. Uh, I'm just uh, going over the, the top and the bottom and the edges and I've rounded off the, the corners. Again, I, I actually quite enjoy this. I find it quite therapeutic. And now I'm just using my router to um, to go around and round off all of the edges just with a, a very small round over bit. I really need to get myself a, a laminate trimmer type router. Uh, I find this thing too big and cumbersome to use and, and I really don't like using it freehand. Uh, it's great when it's in the table but uh, I find it a bit scary uh, to use uh, freehand like this. So uh, yeah, that's the next thing I need to purchase. And now I'm just going over it with some water, wiping down uh, any excess sawdust. Uh, this is just in preparation for the final sand. Going over it with the water just raises the grain in the timber uh, and means that you get an extra smooth final sand. Uh, plus it looks awesome at this point. So now I'm just going over it with um, I can't remember whether I used 180 grit or, or 240 grit at this point, but uh, it just came up so smooth at this point. Um, normally I'd like to go over further, but the finish that I'm going to use, uh, they say don't use more than about 180 grit, I think they say. Um, and, uh, and so that's what I stuck with in this case, but it was still plenty smooth. just did a final sand by hand. I, I don't like to go over the edges with the sander. The sander can be a bit aggressive at times, so I usually just uh, go over them by hand just to get them nice and smooth. Okay, so here we are mixing up the finish. I'm using some Rubio Mono Coat. This is the first time I've used it. And I've seen uh, a few other people on YouTube make some make good use of this, and and the finish that it gives is just awesome. It's bloody expensive. That uh, those small tins that you saw there, which equate to about three hundred and seventy mil, uh, adds up to about a hundred dollars Australian. So uh, I was just mixing up tiny little bits, like I, I think I used about sixty millilitres all up to do the um, the whole tabletop. So it does go far, and, and spreading it with a scraper really makes it uh, go a lot far further. Um, 
if you try to rub it in with a cloth, then the cloth ends up soaking most of it up and, and you just waste it. So using the scraper ensures that everything goes into the, the timber itself. And then uh, after you've given it a chance to dry a bit, you just go over it with the, the cloth and uh, smoothen out any, any lumpy bits. It really was very easy to put on and, and look at the way that it brings out the, um, the epoxy. Of course the MDF doesn't look anything special but this is the underside. They say just go over it with a buffer so I just got out my old roots and uh, with an old uh, fine pad on it. And uh, here's the bit we've been waiting for. It really does bring up the, the colour in the timber and the epoxy really well. I, I really do like this um, finish. It's a, it's a nice uh, matte sheen rather than a high gloss. Um, I used to like high gloss finishes, but now I think they just look a little bit plasticky. Um, and uh, I really like the, the natural look of this uh, Rubio Mono Coat. So, uh, yeah, I was really pleased with it. Um, and as you can see, look at the, the way that it's brought out that timber, it looks fantastic. And, and look, I'm so happy with the way that this has come up um, after the, at the end of the first video. I really wasn't that happy with it, but uh, really happy with the way that it came up. Next step now is to build the, the actual base for the end table. Uh, I've got a few other projects on the boil at the moment, so it's going to be a few weeks before I get stuck into that. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please like and subscribe and all that jazz, and, uh, and I hope to see you for the next video. Bye for now.